Okay guys, hello, this is Dr. Quarterfix. So today I'm gonna be replacing the valve stem seal for this car. And it looks like this. So I'm not gonna be doing a lot of talking here because there is a whole lot of work here. I'm gonna see how fast I can be able to do that. So let me start with the basic thing. So you might see me off the camera sometimes and see me back on the camera sometimes. So the first thing I'm going to be doing here is to lose out the intake manifold. You can just do with a flask screwdriver, depend on it. Pull out the PCV, the valve pipe, okay, pull that out. Then I'm gonna keep this handy. Sensor. I can just simply remove this one here by pulling it out. It's up. Right? It's up. So the next guy here is to remove the just a little bit moment. The wiring for the throttle position sensor which is here you need to push it in then grab this and pull it back then this vacuum hose you just need to pull it gently and get it out right then after that you've been needing a snapping plier to hold here and clip it and get these pipes out of the way because you need to get them out or completely you might also as well at this very point you might also want to lose out your battery negative terminal so there is not going to be any short circuit of electric here. Then for this one also, you push it and press it and pull. And uh, so here, coolant temperature sensor, because you're also going to get to the point where you're going to actually clip this guy here, clip this guy and pull, clip this guy and pull. So you leave this one on because most times you might break it trying to remove it. Aside that, there is one guy you need to also pull from the behind here, which is the camshaft position sensor, which is here. Also need to push and pull, push and pull. That's it right here. So, now since these wires here are disconnected all, the next thing you wanna do, not so much worry about the spark plug, but uh, should you worry, you need to have their right tools to use to pull them from here. If you pull it from here, you damage it. So you wanna pull them off because you're gonna be needing to get them off when you're done. Now for here, in order not to make too much of a disconnection, you just wanna lose out this screw here, and lose the one here and push this backward, push it backward. Wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it like this. Then, then you should get off. Now the next thing you want to do after getting this one off, I've been talking a lot, you also want to disconnect the fuel pump, fuel rail, fuel that goes into the fuel rail, then also this pipe you will need less to actually disconnect it. Then the next guy you want to disconnect again is your map sensor, right, push and pull, then your, your porch valve here, also you need to push and pull and remove the wiring harness because you're going to be separating this from the wiring. Now, after that, after you remove all the sparks, you don't need to remove the injectors, only just remove the pins, right? And that's gonna be much a lot easier as soon as you lose this guy off. So let me go ahead and do that and do this one. Then I'll be back on the camera to explain to you further what you need to do, how you need to go with it. Okay, this back in where it's gonna stay and give you intel of what I'm doing down there. So, we talked about this guy here, so we're gonna go ahead and unscrew it. It's better to perform the service when the engine is cold. Right, it's so it doesn't go out of place. You don't look for it when you're done. This one here, press and remove. All right, and this wiring harness is out of the way. Somewhere here. 
Also, you want to do the same thing to this one here. Push, pull, press and pull. Push, press and pull. So, this one is out. You can gently disconnect some of the wiring harness of the injectors which your hand can reach. It's here. As for the spark plug, I'm going to be using this to remove them. So, pull it on the under part and apply it and push it up. And rub it here. And you don't destroy it. So, do the same thing with the rest of the guys. But like I said, it's also going to be much more easier when you have removed this guy. But now while you're doing this, there is a marking on the ignition coil A, B, C and D. So this is AA, this is the B, this is the C, this is the D. So that's how you're also gonna correspond the spark plug wires, not, not to miss them up. Because if you miss them up, there's gonna be a problem. There's always gonna be a problem when you make a mess, when you don't get anything right. So. Okay, here we go. So, I got only one guy who says he must be paid before he get out of his comfort zone. But let's see how we we'll go about that. Let's see how we we'll go with that. Plan. This is not what I planned for. But it's taking quite too much time, so I'm, I'm gonna leave this one when I get this guy off. So, what is left with getting this guy off? Just a moment, let me get my snapping pliers. Finally, we made it. Gonna need this one when setting the timing back or removing the, uh, adjusting the timing. This one for any flat stuff. This one here to remove the intake manifold, and this one here to pull some other uh, clips if this one can help. So let's go with it. So here, I'm gonna be using this one here right now. It's gonna be pretty much useful here to disconnect the coolant lines and the. Uh, I'm gonna toss in some coolant flowing down. Okay, I've shown it to you on the video before. Ah. Now the main tool I was supposed to use to replace this guy is not yet here. So, at this point right now, I can decide to remove this one by lying here, lying here. So I told you guys previously, then we go. We go, we go, we go, we go. Okay. You wiggle it and you push. Now you can see the gap here. So. It's now open, you can push, 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 like a woman in the ballroom. Push, push. So at this juncture, 
you don't want to come out well since we're already ready for the party we don't have any problem then to go ahead and start losing down this one here from the This place, so I can decide to use this one here. That's the wrong one, but it does the job. It's supposed to be six millimeter Allen key. But since I don't have my six, this uh, T40 can do it. All I need is just a little pipe that's gonna accompany it. And I can actually do that. Put this guy here. So go ahead and put it there. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Now, as a DIY, you need to get a litter and put the boards that are the same and label it. Don't do like I do here because you might get confused at the end which one belongs to which. Wow, it's about to rain. Ooh, the rain is not going to be good under this condition. Under this, because I'm just performing this service not inside a garage, not inside a real garage. Just doing this at home. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay. There we go. And the remain one here. Sometimes I just have to find. I'm mounting what I'm videoing. I'm not videoing what I'm mounting. Fine. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Hurry up, I don't got all day. Hurry up. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Some of them are still sticking in here because... Two. There's supposed to be six of them. Six, but one is last, so we have 13 on board. 12, 13 on board. We gotta get this 12, 13. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. 14. My extension. Okay, that's it. So this guy should be ready to come out right now. Those are completely they're supposed to be eight in numbers. They're supposed to be eight.
Oh. Move this one here. And also need to detach it from here. Or you lose the pen that is another socket there. You don't lose it. There's some sort of tab to press there. And this gotta do the job. This pin here, so you need to apply it here. Okay. Pretty much so this is the spot plug that wouldn't lose out. Okay, have a lot of silicone, silicone valley here, uh, creating disruption from the nozzles to inject the right fuel quantity. Wow, that's good. I'm not seeing any carbon build up. Let me show you guys. So that's one advantage of fuel thread final. What I've been doing to actually remove the other uh, one here that you're not seeing is you need to apply it from under like this and push it and this one should come off right okay let me give you guys an overview there is not any carbon build up in the vast stem cells and that's it right here I don't know if you can see it. Let me on the touch light. Okay, that's a famous notch. And you can see, okay. I don't think that guy failed it. The best way to make sure that you get it right is to find uh, a needle or stuff like this. So you can see that the arrow, you can see it right there. There's an arrow there, the arrow and the notch match. So or we find a rule and place it straight like this. It has to be exactly at the same point before you add this belt. And don't forget, now, before you lose it, here you see how slack the belt is, just like uh, about uh, six mil, six millimeter from this notch here. So you wanna set it that way when you're tensioning this guy right here. The next thing to do is to find the thin socket. That looks like 13. Well, one way to find out is actually 14. So, no, it's 13. And this is 12. over here and backward don't over talk it when you're doing it when you're about to set the timing last at last so right now you can decide to just grab it here you can see that so it's now loosed you can simply take the timing off For some system that have, uh, you know, some manufacturers can be crazy. They don't put those notch, and they will advise you to buy uh, a sprocket uh, stuff that's gonna hold it in place. So now that this one is here, there is a bolt you need to lose out here that's hold this rubber in place because this rubber most of the times you do a stand downward, so you wanna lose this rubber. And don't forget to put it back when you when you are done if it is replacing the timing belt that's gonna be a whole lot of work because you're gonna be nearly dropping the engine you're gonna remove this guy here all right remove this guy and remove the harmonic balancer that's a whole lot of work I can't teach you how to do that you need to figure that out from another people's video who does a lot of mechanic work I'm just a tech guy who knows how to get in and out of place without making a mess. So here, now, <laughs> VW doesn't shock. I mean, they don't stop surprising me. They got in there with a special Allen key. So you don't, you can lose it with just this type of uh, hex or what I call it. You 
can't get in there so it's a special just like this one here you can lose out this one without having that special too so let me go get it and show you how it looks okay most of you who are fixing Toyota will not be familiar with this tool here. This is a special tool which I talked about. This is 8 mil. It's only this tool that can be able to lose this guy. If you attempt it with other one, you will damage it and you never get this guy out. If you have to get it out, it means you have to chisel this place out. So, let me go ahead and lose it up. Okay, that's what it looks like. And I know how to lock things in place and lock mechanic out. So at this point now, we're still not out of the woodwork yet because here, there is a trick, a small trick. These guys, you don't just win straight up. Now, if you lose that, there are other ones. So in order to get, this, uh, to get out of those mess there, you need to lose out this eight and before losing out that eight you need to lose out this top here and this top you need uh, this type here which is uh, t what again I think this should be t t27 to lose this guy and sometimes it's more than t27 but this t27 can be able to do it for me i don't know where the other guy go to but in instead that you're gonna want it you let them go and find the right T that's gonna lose it without making a hiccup. So T27, no. So possibly it's gonna be T30. So where is my... T25. Let me check this guy. This is a P27. Work. Okay. This T40 cannot get in here. I'm gonna find this guy. I've got me locked up again. Okay, we're about to lock ourselves in, so it's T30 that's gonna do it. So go ahead. T27 is gonna want it out. Okay. I don't expect to lose this out completely. I did this so that you don't throw it away. You can't get out, but as long as you draw it that way, that's okay.
Okay. Moment of the truth. I need to get some of the sand that is here. Now, here we go. This is where the fun, the real fun begins. So here, this guy has been leaking a lot of oil. And I didn't know that. Because looking at it, this gasket here, this rubber gasket has kicked. So it need a replacement. This rubber gasket here is bad. And that's why oil is leaking down there. So we're gonna need to replace this guy here. And it's gonna be as simple as you grabbing it. All right, this has cake. But if you don't have a replacement, you just apply it silicone to it. And to reawaken the rubber right there. That's a hell of mistake I made right there. I'm supposed to have gotten it as I'm getting the bath you know, knowing fully where there are some other parts that would be needing help. Okay, now you can see how the engine looks because it's not synthetic that I'm using, otherwise mineral oil is not cast through as it should be looking so clean, but I'm not seeing any defect so far aside this lodge and this lodge, there are not much of them because I just ran some oil on it the other day, I just ran a Transmission fluid on it, and uh, I'm not seeing any sludge here. Okay, guys, this is where the big deal begins from. Now, how the hell do you lose this guy up uh, without taking this rubber off? because it means you have to slide it out. We we're trying to actually lose this without sliding any rubber out. We have another guy there, which is like 10 mil. And uh, Okay, the good thing today is, as long as you lose this top here and you bring it out, The rest is gonna follow. Now there is one tip I wanna give you guys here. <laughs> right? I should have said you shouldn't separate this guy that I you have. There is another. You need to separate this guy from the top there, but I would have said you should never do that. But they have improved. And what I have here is not a normal cam lifter so it's not gonna make any noise I was actually thinking something that you can actually uh, keep a trap of the valve stem lifters seriously the transmission fluid which I used the other day is working miracle because I'm expecting this engine to build a lot of sludge because I've been using the engine oil without replacing it for quite a long time Seriously, that's true. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be using this guy here to clean some shit up. So I can have a better view. Could be a rock view. But to be honest, this engine is so reliable. Damn, so reliable. It's a die hard engine. It has nearly 200,000 miles on. 
and it's still rocking like a champ. Side this valve stem seal which I've never replaced before. So here, on the way to go, we got two things here. Now they did something great. The great thing they did here is if you lose out this 12 bolts that are here, 12 nuts that are here, this rubber is gonna follow with a sprocket. So let's go ahead and lose it out. Should be 14, yes. Get some extension. Let's go in there. Okay, just snap them after another. Because the spring is going to be pushing them up. So you lose them gently, gently. The tension is going to be getting right there. Lifting. I heard a noise. The noise was actually separating. This top from the top cylinder head. Okay, here we go. This guy hanger here should be able to help you to lose it out. Finally. To, to damage the surface. Alright, slowly, slowly. Okay, walk your way in. Okay, I've been needing to lose that 12 of hand there because he's actually putting it in place, but he should. So about 
everything is thin. Well, well, well. Just like I said. Is this stocked? Because these guys, they ain't joking, but we don't have any option not to. Get this guy out first. There is a ten, uh, five mil boat holding it at the back here. When you flip it, that is what is holding this guy in place. Hope you guys don't sacrifice me because this is actually my first time in losing out of this engine. So, every information which I'm giving you here. Is pretty much adventurous for me. Like I tell you guys, I'm not afraid of tearing things apart because I know what's the worst thing that could actually happen. So, out I'm noticing some little file in there because of my not replacing the oil on time I'm not just only replacing the oil on time there's a lot of oil shortage on this engine hey guys I want to tell you guys some little thing here now the way they designed this engine like I told you guys I'm losing for the first time so it's an adventure for me and you guys so the design of this engine is that you need to lose out this sprocket here else this rubber is not going to come out you need to remove that uh, tensioner and the tensioner is stuck there because of the uh, motor mount uh, handle so what i need, need, need to do is to put that thing back in place then use it in to slack it and use another boat uh, another spanner to hold it here and slack it lose it out before you lose the other side so let me go ahead and do it simply Put this one back in place. Okay. And uh, it's going to be very easy to tighten. a little bit faster so guide lock them back sometimes you can just guide like uh, but I don't want to create any mess so it's advisable if you want to put it back all together you can put it back all together so when I mean I'm gonna do it faster let me get my power tool and let's get on with this
Okay, so with this. So. So this does it faster. So the next thing I want to do here is to get uh, this car here. There's a way to go for some car make and model that's gonna actually give it some way you can get this thing in place. But uh, if you don't find it, then I don't want to rotate this because when I did that is because I want to turn this guy here. You can turn it without This is quite tricky Why did I say it's tricky because she decided to turn this without having to properly lose it up, you're gonna end up bending some of the valve. So that is why it's important to actually turn it to TDC before removing the valve. Now this loop is so please that I'm gonna put this stuff like this and expect it not to turn All right then I go ahead and see how I can do it with. this is the tight this is the loose so which means I'm actually supposed to hold it like this so that I can turn this like this It. And the trick so use this one to hold it in place not to move. Then you turn this one here. It's one of the trickiest things to do about this engine here. So lose that in place. So now I'm certain I didn't bend any valve because that's what I'm trying to avoid. So there is a key on that camshaft with something for them. You want to make sure that you don't lose that key and you don't put it wrongly. Because if you put it wrongly, you're going to create a mess. So gently remove this one here. And I'm going to show you the key. This is the key. Them. So if you throw it away, there's a problem. So right now, you can slip this to one side. And getting this one off should be very simple. 
Easy. Okay, the next guy at the back is gonna be 12 or 13 millimeter richer. It's more like 13, which is actually the exhaust. Shield. Bigger. It's supposed to be M10. 